a socialist in the White House. You'd think the prospect would send Wall Street running for the hills. But Bernie Sanders won in New Hampshire this week and is ahead in the national polls. So we have a front runner for the Democratic nomination who is a self described Democratic socialist who wants to tax wealth, have the federal government take over all of health care, and would nationalize a good deal of the energy sector as part of a Green New Deal. And the market's reaction? Reaching for new highs. And our contributor, Larry Summers, has a possible explanation for a stock market bullish on a Sanders nomination. I do think that uh, a number of Bernie Sanders um, policies will be Gap will create uncertainty, will potentially be damaging to growth and employment, and that over time does affect uh, markets. But I also do think that Bernie Sanders' nomination probably does make the reelection of Donald Trump more likely. And for that reason, I think it uh, would tend to make the market uh, go up. Still with us are our contributors, Steve Ratner and Afsana Beshla. So let's talk about it. First of all, I mean, you work with Mike Bloomberg, but you don't have a position on the campaign. I want to make that clear. I don't have a position on the campaign, but I do have a dog in the fight. You know, so to speak. <laughs> we won't tell him that you call him a dog. But, <laughs> so, but, but give us a sense. So you heard from Larry Summers. The policies of Bernie Sanders would be bad for the markets, but maybe the markets like the possibility of a nomination because they say that makes sure Donald Trump, whom we like, We'll be back in office. Yeah, I, I understand Larry's point, and it's of course like everything Larry says not wrong at all. And uh, but I I think uh, he I think he's maybe being a little too sof more sophisticated than the market is. Uh, I think this election is still a long way away from the market's point of view. I don't think you can see it reacting day to day to whatever happens politically in terms of who's up or who's down. I think the big driver behind the market right this minute are is the fall in interest rates, uh, long term interest rates, because of everything we've been talking about. Have been coming down, which makes stocks more attractive, and has really been, I think, the principal propellant behind the market for quite some time now. So, is that what it is? Interest rates low? I think interest rates are low. Jay Powell said that also in his testimony. Also, you have huge amounts of liquidity sitting on the side of the market, trying to get into the market. And then, last but not least, I think the question is whether those same people believe that uh, that Bernie will will win. And so, if people do not really think that's credible. It may not be so impactful on the market. So, how sophisticated is the market? Is there also possible they're saying, okay, even if he got the nomination, there's a limit to what he could get through as a practical matter? if he got elected. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is another exactly. level of analysis you could do, which is that uh, the probability of the Democrats taking the Senate back, which they would have to do, is probably a bit less than 50 50. To get a lot of stuff done, you need 60 votes in the Senate, which obviously neither party is almost certainly going to have. So, yeah, I think part of what the market's also saying is there's a limit to what. What are you look, the markets are not perfect. You remember that when Donald Trump got uh, elected, the market immediately went down. Then it turned around within about two hours and went up when it realized that a Trump presidency actually could be good for the market. So markets are not perfect. Well, and they may not be perfect. What's, what's driven them up during President Trump's uh, term? Because we have one person for Bloomberg Opinion who wrote a thoughtful piece this week. He said, look, if you look at it closely, it's not tax cuts, it's not deregulation, it's actually deficit spending. But that really is driving the market more than anything else. I'm not sure I would agree with that. I think I think it's pretty clear the tax cut. And in retrospect, I kick myself because I didn't really see this. I think it's pretty clear the tax cut had a significant one-time effect on the market. When you cut the corporate rate from 35 percent to 21 percent, earnings go up a lot, mm -hmm. P multiples come down, and then the stocks go up to offset that. So that I think absolutely played a role. The fact that the economic recovery has remained very steady. Uh, and the consumer particularly has remained very sh stronger than probably most people would have guessed. And the third major factor, in my opinion, uh, is low interest rates and the fact that the what they call the equity risk premium, the difference between treasuries and, and what you get on equities, even a dividend yield on the S&P, makes stocks very, uh, very compelling. And as Afsani said, there's a huge amount of liquidity in the world. So, Afsani, we now have seen a budget proposal, it's not a budget, but a budget proposal from the uh, Trump administration that takes on more and more debt and yes. spends a lot more money. Frankly, more on military. It actually decouples it from the discretionary spending on right. the social side. What would that mean for the U.S. economy? What would it mean for investors? I actually think it could be negative for investors because since a lot of money being is that is being taken off the table is in things that are related to social programs and student loans and having a population that has a bigger student loan problem or a bigger um, health bill problem you're going to have people spend less in that kind of economy. The other side of the budget I think which was interesting in the on the military side and I'm no expert on the military side but it was 
it's very much hardware oriented. A lot of what's mm -hmm. very interesting right now on um, R&D going into military is really using a lot of technology and not that that would not be important, but a lot of the very large numbers that were in that uh, budget document were more traditional than modern kind of technology use in military. So, so Steve, uh, going into the next election, President Trump is going to make the case, he's making the case right now, he's been really good for the economy, good for employment, uh, tame inflation, it's been a good economy, and a growth economy. At the same time, we see um, asset valuations uh, going up much faster than wages, for example, and, the, and much of the real growth rate. What accounts for that? What's the difference? And why are asset... Yeah, valuations going up so much faster than the rest of the economy. Well, again, I think it's a factor of lower interest rates and, and the value of an asset, whether it's a piece of real estate or a stock. Real estate's the best example. Real mm -hmm. estate essentially trades at a, what we call a cap rate. It's essentially a, a, the inverse of an interest rate. When interest rates go down, the value of real estate goes up because it's so heavily dependent on financing. But I think, uh, I think income inequality is, is terrible. It's probably not gotten worse. In some ways, it's oddly enough gotten better for the people yeah. at the very bottom, and that's because of state minimum wage increases. And so Trump actually you know, has a case to make. I don't happen to think personally that his policies have created this economic environment. And I think there are many measures by which the economy today is doing no better than it did under Obama. Well, you've written about that. I have but, written about but that. But sometimes the fact of the matter may be different than the political fact of the matter. I because totally agree with even you. Even if that is true, demonstrably true, uh, uh, to the polity, to well, the people going into the voting booths, they may say, look, at, he's look, the president, looks pretty good to I me. I think there's two things to say about that. One is that J.P. Morgan put out a paper, you might have seen it, in which they calculated that he has the greatest economic tailwind of any incumbent since 1896. Yeah. And that's using these headline numbers that people tend to look at. And secondly, if you look at the public opinion polls and whether people still think uh, the right track wrong numbers are still very negative. But if you ask people, are you better off economically than you were a year ago, two years ago, those numbers have been going up very steadily. And that's Trump's tailwind. I'm saying, as an investor, what right. do you want to see? I think what uh, Steve said is really important because policy seems to take a very long time to turn mm. into numbers. So really important to have the right kind of economic policy and not to, um, not to, for example, slow down the economy at this time and not to put too much fuel in it either because either could be very damaging for the markets. Uh, the other thing I think that uh, as investors we like to see in the, mar in the marketplace is more certainty because mm -hmm. risk is something that you can put on probabilities and make a decision on right or wrong. But uncertainty is something that is very damaging uh, to decision making and investments. So as, as, that as, is very much um, around t today. And so are you better off under President Trump? Your fund, your investments, have you done well under President Trump? I think there has been a lot of upward movement in the markets that has benefited us just like mm -hmm. everybody else. Uh, at the same time, I think that is coming to an end. I think mm -hmm. moving forward, uh, the next 10 years will not be as easy as the last 10 years for us or for anyone else.